Hello and welcome to another edition of Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm your host, Deborah Milo. Today we will be talking to Marcus Johnson, Silver Spring's own superstar jazz keyboardist and composer. Marcus has been a major draw at the annual Silver Spring Jazz Festival since it began in 2004, performing his blend of contemporary jazz stylings and hip-hop rhythms. We are honored to have him with us today to talk about Montgomery County's wildly popular jazz festival and about the popularity of this genre of music. Welcome and thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. I've got a lot of questions for you, so <laughs> we'll start at a good beginning, I promise. I understand that you grew up here in Montgomery County. Did you also get your musical start here as well? I really did. I um, started playing, uh, I got a first Casio keyboard when I was at White Oak Middle School. And um, my father had taken me to a concert years before with Earth, Wind & Fire. And I was like, eh, yeah, really, back in the 70s <laughs> oh, yes. where they're flying around. And before George Lucas and right. Steven Spielberg got together and right. doing things, they were flying around the Capitol Center. And the music was, um, it's how I spent my Saturdays when I, I had weekends at my father's house, just listening to, you know, Earth, Wind & Fire on a big, long, nine-foot, you know, mm -hmm. wooden album over here, radio in the middle, albums on the other side. And, um, you know, it, it, the music touched me, but at that time I couldn't play. My mom played classical music, uh, but was a psychotherapist. And um, once I got into uh, junior high school, I learned about things like go-go music. And that's when it was wildly popular in the beginning, Rare Essence and, and Chuck Brown and EU and all those bands. And you know, every kid wanted to be in a go-go band. Absolutely. So um, I couldn't really play. And one day my stepfather won the pick three lottery and uh, bought me my first real keyboard from uh, Chuck Levin's Music Center right here in Montgomery County. And it was a Roland uh, Juno 60. And uh, from there, I started learning things like Planet Rock by ear. And, uh, you know, learned different chords sitting behind people. And there was uh, that summer going from eighth grade to ninth grade, essentially, there was, there was a girl, you know, love inspires a lot. And I was, I was going to write a song for her. <laughs> so in order to write a song for her, I had to know how to play the piano. And that's the summer I really uh, advanced very fast. Mm -hmm. And um, by the beginning of the year, you know, gave her a little cassette tape because that's what we used back in the day. And, uh, you know, when I learned that that worked, you know, that it was done. And, and it was something that I loved to do. So uh, all of my music, Ray Harry, the Montgomery Blair Jazz Ensemble, played there for four years, Ron Kearns, mm -hmm. uh, both of which are legends in Montgomery County music, uh, with the All County Jazz Band, Ron Kearns, we went to New mm -hmm. Orleans as well, with Ray and, and Blair, and uh, from there went to the University of Miami. And, uh, but my start was right here in Montgomery County. Nice, very nice. So with all that wonderful blend, you had a lot of very positive influences to really give you the spice for your music, but who was your biggest influence? <sighs> You know, when I go back and I think about it, um, a lot of it, I mean, you know, the, the church chords that made their way into go-go music, but then were able to be transferred into jazz mm -hmm. because there's like this link in the chord structure. Um, it was guys like, you know, Godfather, you know, that played keyboards for Rare Essence. And, you know, listening to how they changed and, uh, um, you know, used different inversions. And it was just a rich, rich sound. There's a guy who still plays with uh, guys like Chris Bodie and, and Sting. Uh, his name is Frederico Pena, okay. uh, piano player. He lives in Washington, D.C. These are the guys that I would look up to and watch them play mm -hmm. um, as they were uh, doing stuff with AMFM and EU. And, again, soloing. Then, you know, Miles uh, Davis will come into town and pick these guys up. Mm -hmm. Rick Weldon, um, I forget, uh, Glenn, I think, on, on bass, and then Fred to play on keys. And, you know, you're looking up and you're looking at Chuck Brown's band, you know, backing up Miles Davis. And DC never, and, and Montgomery County in general, never really figured out how to promote that properly. Mm -hmm. But uh, those were the guys who I, I looked up to, Glenn Douglas, uh, um, uh, God, there's, um, I can't think of his name right now, but there are a lot of local guys mm -hmm. that were my influences, that much more so than even the greats that I did listen to once I got into college. But, you know, my cousin Paco Crawford, you know, who is a music director of a church in, and, um, in California now, but Montgomery County in general had a lot of talent, you know, coming out of it and people to look up to itself. 
it just sounds as though that you've had so many wonderful influences. And when I hear you talk about that, it also begs the question, who from the classics, the, the traditional jazz artists like Thelonious Monk and you know people like that, Coltrane, all of them, I heard in my parents' home growing mm -hmm. up, who, if some of those were also an influence for you? Because I heard you say James Brown. Mm -hmm. So that's very significant too. So that's a generation that I, that I also think that helps to propel a little bit of the creativity. I mean, you know, it's the funk. I mean, I grew up with hip hop and jazz and gospel and the Wash FM and Murray Kenny Rogers. I mean, it's the whole mixture. Mm -hmm. That and, and if there's anything, as you talk about the mosaic of Montgomery County, mm -hmm. that is what separates this place from everywhere else I've traveled around the world and makes it special. So, you know, yeah, I mean, everybody listens to Thelonious Monk. Right. Everybody listened to a Red Garland. You know, I was, uh, when I went to um, University of Miami, I was introduced to Someday My Prince Will Come, the album that Miles Davis did. Mm -hmm. uh, and Wynton Marcellus was named after a pianist named Wynton Kelly. Mm -hmm. And Wynton Kelly was not like, you know, the, the best, you know, technically, most technically proficient pianist in jazz. But boy, you know, what he did with it. And then I learned that you could play space and that you could play colors. And it wasn't all about, it's a conversation. And those were the guys I got. Red Garland, you know, uh, I did listen to Oscar Peterson, George right. Duke, oh, yes. you know, Quincy Jones. A lot of people know Quincy Jones from like the dude and um, his uh, uh, juke joint record. You right, know? right. But Quincy Jones was in, you know, basically he was a conductor of a jazz ensemble, a big band, you know, that traveled the world. The people don't know that. You know, and if you read his, uh, actually read his autobiography, which I have a couple of times, you see the things that he went through. Uh, uh, at the end of the big band era and then trying to redefine himself. But, right. you know, you listen on the business side of what Quincy does, and then there was this big band thing, and my sister helped me out with that a lot by buying me Quincy Jones albums for my birthday one year. Okay, okay. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Silver Spring Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. As you know, this is this is huge. Mm -hmm. This is huge. And it's annual Hallmark event for the county. Mm -hmm. And I'd like for you to tell me, about how long have you been performing at the festival? Well, it's really funny. I mean, I've been performing at it every year since the beginning. Um, and uh, the, the, it's great to work with people like Susan Hoffman, who puts it together as well. Uh, in the beginning, I went to a guy named Devance Walker, and I was like, man, mm -hmm. there needs to be a jazz festival here. And we sat in his house, and he's like, well, I know who you need to talk to. So we had a meeting and set it up with uh, Susan Hoffman. And um, the first year, we decided to do it on September 11th because uh, it was um, 2002, and we said that we're not going to allow anybody else to define our day. So September 11, 2002, we had the first one. Um, it was in it was on Ellsworth, but further up on Ellsworth in the plaza okay. at downtown Silver Spring. And I brought in all of the three keys musicians that I had at the time. So it was Allison Williams, uh, Nick Colion, Michael Lincoln, um, and myself. And then another thing that I thought would be cool would be to like let's have you know a school component. Right. And uh, because some of the jazz festivals like Jazz USA back in the day when I was in high school had a student component um, to it. So everybody agreed that that would be cool. So we had the, the kind of jazz off mm -hmm. between the, um, the different high school bands, mm -hmm. three of which, and then you started the professional side of mm -hmm. it. Um, and then we performed and we were expecting about 3,500 people to show up and we ended up that year alone having 7,500 people show up. And I remember that Austin Grill, Red Lobster, like they ran out of food um, and they realized the county itself, uh, Doug Duncan was um, county exec at the time, mm -hmm. and they realized that they had something very big. Absolutely. And so uh, the next year moved it to Veterans Plaza when it was all green and no building and, you know, got uppers of 20,000 plus people. And, you know, the, the, the whole thing was closing the streets. And for me, when I was in L.A., uh, when I was in law school, I clerked at MCA Records. Okay. And what you notice in Hollywood is like they'll take a street and make it theirs like that. And we weren't used to really seeing that around mm -hmm. Washington and, and the uh, Montgomery County area. 
So with the help of Susan and Mel Tull and the whole crew of downtown mm -hmm. Silver Spring, uh, we talked to the county and talked to the police about shutting down Ellsworth and Fenton for that little area. So it would be like a street fair, but we could make it hot. And so uh, that was the, 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 the whole concept. And it's grown from the 7,500 to where it is right now, which is, you know, uh, a couple, uh, say 20, uh, 20 to 25,000 each year. But I played every year, headline okay. last year. And I think because, you know, the idea came out of Montgomery County and, and that meeting that I had with the Vance and then Susan Hoffman, that, um, and being from Montgomery County, mm -hmm. uh, it's just one of the things that's on my calendar, and as long as it's on, you know, my calendar and theirs, it'll keep right, on going. Right, right. Yeah. So it's impacted your, the Jazz Festival has impacted your career in phenomenal ways is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Do you see, do you notice a lot of uh, young people that come to the uh, Jazz Festival? You know, again, the, one of the unique things about Montgomery County is the idea of the, the makeup of the family, the demographics. Mm -hmm. And um, this is one place where you'll see, you know, moms after the gym and the YMCA going to Whole Foods and shopping, but then not too long after that, you'll see the husbands with the wives shopping. Mm -hmm. And you'll see white mixed with black and black mixed with Asian mm -hmm. and Asian mixed with white and blah, blah, blah. It's Montgomery County. Right. The, the, the real great thing is that on that day and the other community days in Silver Spring, they all mesh very well. And so when I'm signing CDs afterwards or I look out in the crowd, I see everything. Young kids, old kids, adult kids, <laughs> old you kids, know, right, right. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, families really enjoying themselves. So yeah, I see little, the people bring their daughters and sons up to me and like, you know, take a picture with my kid. And then, you know, now it's, you know, going on the ninth year. So some of these kids that were two, you know, are now 10. 10 years some old, of those right. kids that are 15, uh, that were five and six are now on their way to college. And so what they, a lot of parents have done is they've used my example of, you know, doing the music and the education and the yes. business yes. to say like, you need to, he did it, you can do it. Right. And, and I tell them, I'm not special. <laughs> If I did it, you can do it better. And I learned that from Sesame Street. Anything you can do, I can do better. So <laughs> it's like, you know, hey, this, the things that stick with you for 40 that's years. That's right, right, that's right. So yeah, I see every, it all walks of life. Amazing. What type of image do you think that your style of music conveys? You know, sometimes you hear people say, oh, it's, you know, sophisticated urban this, or, you know, just very, very smooth jazz, but you just have a different fusion, if you will. And what, what how would you define it? I mean, it's like an instrumental urban kind of uh, okay. mixture. I mean, you know, the perfect term for it, for it is uh, a, mosa a mosaic, where you have these different kind of, it's like a collage, mm -hmm. and you have, uh, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this over top. And um, you have the go-go influences, you have the hip-hop influences, you have the uh, uh, classical jazz influences on some of the songs. My latest CD, This Is How I Rock, you have rock influences with, you know, Smells Like Teen Spirit by Nirvana. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was in front of 30,000 people in LA uh, two weeks ago, and they were just like rocking. When we played that, the guitar player was, you know, getting this thing on. Right. So I look at it as, you know, it's just me. And that's, I'll wear a t-shirt with, I was in Berlin playing, uh, or Munich playing, with a uh, um, Nine Inch Nails t-shirt, I think it was. <laughs> um, and people are like, what the heck? And then play, you play Nirvana, and they're like, what the heck? And you have on jeans and chucks, you know, which is my favorite way to play, because I'm most comfortable just chilling like that. I understand. And, because um, I can run around the stage and act absolutely, crazy. Absolutely, absolutely. My back's falling a little bit, working on that. Well, yeah. you know something? That's, that's <laughs> incredible. That's so much to be able to be aware of, too, and to know. So we're gonna talk more about that in our next segment. Sounds great. Sounds good. For those of you who've just tuned in, you are watching Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm Deborah Milo, and we're talking with local jazz musician, Marcus Johnson. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll return shortly with more conversation about jazz and the Silver Spring Jazz Festival. Montgomery County honors World War II veterans. On Wednesday, September 19th, the county will salute those who served our nation 70 years ago and became part of what is called the greatest generation. 
For information and registration, call 240-777-7929. Packers, Viking, Packers, Viking, Packers, Viking, Red State, Blue State, Vegan, Carnivore. We come from different places. Uptown, Downtown, Optimus, Center. We come to different conclusions. Half empty, half full. But when we live united, we create real, lasting change in the building blocks of life. The education, income, and health of our communities, <laughs> our families, united. even the person next to us. Live united. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer. Live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. Serving your community is a great feeling. The Montgomery County Volunteer Center can connect you to hundreds of volunteer opportunities available throughout the area. Are you a student, senior, professional, community group, or business looking to serve? Simply visit our website to select what's right for you and get great ideas from past projects with our volunteer toolkits or share a success story of your own. The Montgomery County Volunteer Center. Make an impact in your community. Where will you serve? Welcome back to Mosaic, an African-American perspective. I'm here with local jazz musician Marcus Johnson. Marcus, we were having a fantastic conversation. I'd like to continue that uh, to talk a little bit about you've, I've read that you've delved into some very unique and, if I may say, uber sophisticated <laughs> uh, entrepreneurial endeavors lately. How important do you feel it is for African-Americans to venture outside of the so-called and perceived norm, business opportunities, to try to try new endeavors, unique endeavors. Hmm. I think it's absolutely important. I mean, you know, as I listen to the headlines um, of the day, and I think about things like people talking about we need our jobs back and manufacturing back, and um, what concerns me is that we're leading people down the a, 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 a train of, you know, uh, I don't want to say deception. Mm. But when I, I look at and I read Inc. Magazine and I see that plants now are, you know, 90, 95 percent automated. Right. It's not necessarily something that these, you know, the jobs are going to come back in manufacturing, these same old things. And um, I think it's, it's very important for us to recognize new opportunities. And one, um, one thing that, that we've lost in our African-American community is the history of entrepreneurship. Uh, I had a friend that was like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, yeah, there's this book and it's about this town and people and how they ran things back in the day and this, that, and the other. And I'm looking at him and I said, you know, see, that's our problem. We always want to go back to look at things mm -hmm. from some 50 years ago, you know, historical, <laughs> you know, perspective. Mm -hmm. We're doing stuff right now. Of course. You know, you look at what we're doing with flow. I have my buddy, uh, another Montgomery County resident, Robert Taylor, Theron uh, Investments, who built, you know, with uh, Bazudo Kenyon Square mm -hmm. and is now building a new residential development in uh, New Orleans. I mean, you're talking hundreds of millions to billions of dollars that we are allocating, right. but we don't tell that story. Right. We say, go get a job. Marcus has a law degree. Marcus has a, you know, an MBA. Mm -hmm. You know, Marcus, you should be working at a law firm. Well, this is not your life to tell me what to do. And what we've done for so long is pigeonhole our kids into something that we say is safe. I'll tell you, if you want to find out safe, ask the 14 million Americans who had a job and lost it. Ask them how safe going and getting a job is. But I will tell you something that you can have fun with. It's whatever you dream about every day. Absolutely. And this is what we don't do anymore and what we must do. It is imperative for these little young black, and it's not just a black thing, this is everybody. A job is not gonna come out of the sky. You know, I, I believe in Jesus. Jesus is gonna tell me every morning, Marcus, I gave you something, another day. Another day, right. Go out there with the faith that you have in me now that you know your heart's beating and your lungs breathing and your eyes are seeing and your hands work and your ears work. Oh, and your brain works and your legs work. Your back, we're working on that, as I said <laughs> earlier. But you know, you take that out and go out and make a difference. Mm -hmm. Show me how it's not about where we've been. We did that. Right. Where are we going now? And it's up to us. So yes, now I'm into wine. I have, you know, Flow Wine and the Flow Lifestyle Company in and of itself, where we have the Flow Music Lifestyle stuff that we're doing. Um, 
I'm working with one of the other municipalities in the area so that we'll have our Flow Fest, which is the wine and music festival okay. that we're creating. We have now in over 2,000 stores nationwide our new Flow wine that's uh, you know coming out of California. Uh, we have two varietals there, a Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Syrah, Merlot blend of a red, and a Chardonnay with a little Viognier and Riesling. Why wine? Well, why not? It, it, it matches exactly with you know the target demo that I'm dealing with that I look out and see at Blues Alley every time I play. Okay. It's right there. Okay. So you know it's opening your eyes. A job. If you're looking for a job, you will always be looking for a job. Even when you're working, you know I spoke at one of the universities uh, here not too long ago at a, as a keynote, and I asked the kids, how many of you are, of you all are going to be entrepreneurs? To raise their hand. Mm. The problem is. It's all wrong in our perspective. People mm -hmm. think that I need a boss. No, you can be a leader and you are CEO of the brand of you, no matter where you are. Mm -hmm. The person working the camera right now is the CEO of that position. Absolutely. The better you do it, the more it's yours. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So why not You know, take a chance? That's what we're scared to do. And from a people that have so much faith, it, it's really ironic that we don't have faith enough to be like, I'll support you through the rough times mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. I'll support you through the rough times of that. I have faith. I go to church every Sunday, right? Well, let's have faith to know that they talk about peaks, they talk about valleys in the Bible. They talk about faith the size of a mustard seed moving mm -hmm. mountains, mm -hmm. right? That, if you're gonna preach it, faith without works was my quote, you know, that said right. it really ain't nothing. Go out there and do it. Take a chance. You're going to fall on your face. And you know what? It's life. It's okay. Get back up. It's okay. It really is okay. I know that when you influence, when you talk to young people, do you ever get an opportunity to see some of the young people that have attended your concerts or venues who now, as you said early, earlier, who are a lot older now, maybe going to college, do you ever have a chance? Do they come up and say, Marcus, I don't know if you remember me, but this is when you had a chance of posing a picture for me with all, me? All the time. Really? And I talk to people, you know, I actually let people intern with me their parents are like can my son work with you can my daughter work with you and I, I have one intern that's working now I think she's at Silver Docks and in, uh, in the AFI and she's doing event planning and she was I forget what school she went to I want to say Spelman but I think that's wrong maybe it was Spelman but she was working with me now is on to something else one of my students that I taught when I was a professor at Bowie State um, actually sat in with me the other day and I, I teach a, I, I taught a business development class mm -hmm. for artists and non-business majors mm -hmm. and he, now he has his CD out and is building his career as a musician. I have people that I've talked about the LSAT with that invite mm -hmm. have invited me to their graduation from law school you know and again my message is simple dream it, plan it, execute it then listen and learn about what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong, change the dream and do it all over again. It's the idea that the founders had when they said to create a more perfect union. Right. They didn't say this place was perfect, and they didn't say that it ever could be perfect, mm -hmm. but what they did say is that it could be more perfect. And it's one of those things that gives you something to do for the rest of eternity. Absolutely. I know relaxation is very important to everyone, to say the that? least. <laughs> I'm sorry, relaxation. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that there's probably rare opportunities that you get a chance maybe to do that. What are some of the ways that you enjoy relaxing when you're away from the music industry? P90X, I work out pretty much every day. Okay, now wait a second. That's what, what is P90X? P90X is this workout program, you know, that you see it on TV. And Tony Horton, you know, it's oh, 90. No. <laughs> you know, you do your thing and... <laughs> <laughs> it's that one right there, yeah. The, yeah, so we have fun. With, I have fun with that, and it's my way to get away. And it, that is a stress reliever. When I don't work out or I don't eat well, it has an immediate impact on how I feel throughout the day. Oh, and, of course. You know, and then when I'm working out, I can do anything. I can go a little bit without eating, and I'm still rolling. I can go days and days and days at a time and still make it work. I play golf. My buddy uh, John G, another, you know, used to be a Montgomery County mm -hmm. resident. Uh, we play all the courses. Um, one of my friend's fathers, Dr. Styx McLaren, who is retired, we play Falls Road whenever I get a chance mm -hmm. to do that. It's a little busy right now, you know, expecting a, a little girl soon, so I'm excited about that. Of course. And uh, so I'm trying to get in all the relaxation I can because I have an idea that if uh, she has my genes, she will be all over the place. So. 
Yeah. yeah. I can tell you now that she's definitely going to be all over the but, place. But I tell you, relaxation, it can be, you know, anything. I mean, I, uh, I got this book when I was in Napa at a bookstore, and it just stuck out. And I think God does that to me. I believe in all the coincidences, but I believe that this one was one. That God directly was like, Psh, you need to get this, and it's called The Sabbath. And okay. it talks about it from a non-denominational perspective, where it could be like a minute, where you can go in that corner right over there, mm -hmm. just go, mm -hmm. and then get back in it. It's here. Right. You know, and then right. also, Freeing yourself of that other person that's in your head. Because right. all my friends, we all deal with anxiety. We talk about it, laugh about it. But whoever that other person is in your head, not giving them rent there, free rent, no, you mm -hmm. have to pay to get in there. Matter of fact, <laughs> it, there's no no vacancies. Right. You know, and letting that go. And when, you, when you're true about what you're going through and you have the person to talk to and knowing that nobody's perfect and, you know, seeing a therapist isn't a bad thing and right. working out isn't a bad thing and taking a break when people think you're crazy and going to St. Thomas isn't a bad thing because if you're not good, nothing around you is going to be good. Well, then the product's not good. Period. Because it comes through, I'm quite sure. It comes through. All that energy will come through That's either it. way. That either is it. way. Music has such a profound impact on shaping young people's lives and they adore celebrities. What advice would you have for young musicians who are trying to break into the field, as it were? Go to business school. Very well said, yes. Period. Learn your brand. I would tell you, you know, you can learn music now on YouTube. You can get, you can learn music now with the software program. Mm -hmm. And I know there are probably a lot of, you know, music professors that are like throwing something at the television right now, you know, but honestly, it's when you decide to make this your living, it becomes a business. There's a balance sheet, profit and loss, uh, a cash flow statement. You need to know how to manage that. Absolutely. Because you can do like I did and work at a Holiday Inn one night a week, three hours in that night, and make, you know, mm -hmm. low six figures, let's say, mm -hmm. generating revenue. Most of that would go to my band members, most of that would go to marketing, but that's one day a week. If I can keep just a teensy weensy bit of that and then work five days in a week, wait a minute, I might actually have a career at this. But what do people tell me? Oh, you're a Georgetown JD MBA. Oh, you have a top five record or, or 10 of them, mm -hmm. you know, on Billboard. Mm -hmm. Oh, you play at this place for 30,000 people, da 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 da. Well, wait a minute, but this pays for my orange juice and it pays for it's yes. regular. I get to eat free here. I get a place where people come in at a hotel. I'll be at a Holiday Inn. It was the 21st Amendment Club in the center of federal, the mm -hmm. whole federal triangle mm -hmm. stuff down there. And all I got a gig in Dakar, Senegal, a week long stay, and they want to do a cultural exchange because the Amazing. ambassador stayed at that particular hotel. Get out of your head, that other little person I was just talking about. Right. It ain't about the Holiday Inn. It's about what you do. You define everything. It doesn't define you. So go to business school, understand business, Learn piano on the side from right. a you know independent teacher. Right. Give another musician a way to you know make a living. Mm -hmm. If you want to study at a at an institution, classical, uh, classic jazz or in, or or, or uh, you know music production, go do that. But make sure half your classes are accounting, marketing, strategy, mm -hmm. and the most important thing that they don't even teach at Harvard Business School right now is sales. You better know how to <laughs> once you get it how to sell it. Absolutely. My final question for you, if you had to think of a personal slogan, and you've given us a lot of wonderful, wonderful words to live by and be inspired by, and you wanted it to leave a real impact, what would it be? Dream it and do it. You gotta love it. It's simple, it's easy. Now if people would just do it, gotta love that. Marcus, this has been a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. Thank you for thank coming. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, that's about all the time we have for today. I want to thank our guest, Marcus Johnson, for joining us. I'm Deborah Milo. Please join us again next month for another edition of Mosaic, an African-American perspective.
County Cable Montgomery, your information station.